Yeah, g'day, it's Charlie ZL2 CTM. Right, so um, I just want to do a quick video today looking at the um, the RF splitter that I've settled upon for this little SDR rig. Um, what I've done over the last couple of days is I've got mounted now the two NE612 mixers. Um, they're set up now to provide the INQ audio that will go into the Tensi to be processed and then sent out the, uh, the USB cable to um, to the computer software. I've uh, got the SI5351 there which will be providing uh, the INQ uh, clock signals to those two mixers. Um, so the next step now is to have an RF splitter sitting here on the input side that's splitting that incoming RF into two equal portions to provide to the two mixers. Um, upstream of that um, splitter that will sit here will be a bandpass filter which will be shared uh, both on receive uh, and also on transmit. So that RF splitter uh, will, will serve two functions. It'll be an RF splitter on receive, um, splitting the RF into the two uh, INQ channels, and then on transmit it'll combine the RF before sending it back through that bandpass filter to eventually then go on to the power amplifier. Um, so technically it's an RF um, splitter combiner. Anyway, now um, so what I need to do uh, is make sure that that splitter um, is providing uh, 50 ohms, uh, a constant 50 ohms to the uh, bandpass filter, noting that the input uh, resistance of the two NE612s is 1500 ohms. Um, so that's one of the design factors. So just sort of moving the camera back here, uh, what I have down here is what I'm probably going to run with. Um, it's one of two options that I was exploring uh, and I'll, uh, I'll go through that in detail there. Uh, the primary is the uh, the pink and the secondary is bifilar wound uh, and what that's doing is, well, I'll just to zoom back out again, is doing that splitting. So on the uh, on the oscilloscope there is the two input signals, so I say again the two output signals, they're just superimposed over to each, off top of each other there, so let me just zero that back up again and on the uh, on the SIGGEN, uh, here we've got 7 megs coming out that's being split uh, and if I was to re reduce that down to, I think it goes 1 meg, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 so not too bad um, and what I'll do, I'll, I'll uh, also put on the old SNA and just have a look at that just to um, uh, to show that as well so what I'll probably do now is just have a look at what I did in terms of um, the two options. So the first one which we'll look at was um, just a, a very simple tour read as we just saw before. I, I chose a FT50-43 uh, just because of the size. Um, I, I was initially playing around with 20 plus uh, odd turns. So an FT37-43 uh, which is going to be too small. Um, as I said, I need to be able to present on the input side here a constant 50 ohms because the bandpass filter is sitting here. Noting that on the output, uh, I've got 1500 ohms, which is the NE612. Now the secondary there is by file wound, um, uh, just to make sure that I'm getting that, that nice good coupling and and a um, and and the same. Uh, you know, not good good tight coupling, therefore to guarantee that sort of. Um, the same output there. Didn't really make sense, but never mind. Right, so I need, also need to do some transform reaction here, uh, noting that I need to transform that 50 up into the 1500. Now, I've got those two 1500s in parallel here, so actually, in terms of the secondary, I'm going to be matching uh, 50 ohms to half of that, so to 750 ohms. So therefore, my turns ratio N is going to be the square root of 750 ohms divided by 50 comes out at 3.87 uh, and, a, and a sort of close enough uh, will be 5 turns to 19 turns. So if we look down there, that's exactly what that is. We have uh, 5 turns on the pink pink one in there on the on the uh, primary and then that bifilar wound secondary is 19 turns. Right, so what I might do, I might just Put the SNA on that now, and we have a quick look at that, and then I will look at the other option I looked at. So let me just disconnect the oscilloscope, and let me just bring this around here. 
I'll leave the camera running, so apologise for that. I should have left that connected, what was I thinking? So you'll recall this is that little SNA, that uh, Nano VNA that I bought a while back. So I've been finding that quite useful actually. So I'm going to use channel 0 and I'm going to use one of the three methods for um, methods for measuring impedance. And that's just using the uh, the channel 1 or the S11 we'll be looking at here. Now hopefully, I know there's going to be a few reflections there, but we'll see how we get on. Um, I think that's going to be about as good as I'm going to get, I'm afraid, and I apologise for that. We'll see how we get on. Right, it is what it is. Okay, so what I'm going to do here, I'm just going to do, uh, bring up a, uh, a memory. Let me just go memory recall. What have I done here? Recall. Recall 4. Um, so what I've got down here, you'll see that my start frequency I'm scanning from is from 3.5 megahertz. So for the 80 meter band. Uh, up to 14 megs um, and you can see there that uh, not not exactly on 50 ohms which would be in the middle there but uh, it's not too bad and then actually it turns out to be um, a range of uh, 48 to 66 ohms you can see up here so I can drag that and drag along the frequency range uh, and I'm like I say I'm, I'm um, varying from roughly in fact 49 ohms here through to 65 if I then was to go back uh, and bring up the display format and say SWR, now we can see down here that I'm flat again from that 3.5 megs through to 14 megs. Um, I'm at the highest end there, so it's on a slight slope. I'm still down at 1.52. So um, while it's not perfect, um, it's going to be good enough for, for, for what I want to do here. Um, so I'm pretty confident that I'll be presenting you know, pretty close to 50 ohms to that bandpass filter for for the uh, the frequencies of interest for me, namely uh, 80 meters, 40 meters, and then 20 meters. Rightio, so that's that one. So let me just turn that off, and then I'll just have a look at the other one I um, I had a look at, and it was based on. A, um, a RF splitter from uh, P6 Alpha Oscar Juliet. Uh, I've seen this one floating around a couple of times. Um, I elected to use two BN43 302s, which are the, uh, the slightly smaller binocular core ones there. Um, uh, this was his original design here, and then I had to modify it to. Uh, take into consideration that rather than having 50 ohms on the output, I had two 1500 ohms. Um, otherwise, and then also uh, to modify the yeah, the front here. So, just looking at the the right hand side here, uh, the secondary or the second transformer that's on the right hand one, as you can see there, uh, is two turns of uh, bifolar bifolar wound. Um, start to finish, start to finish, with that uh, centre tap coming back through to the first uh, transformer, which is there, which is transforming, um, as we saw, very similar to what we saw in the first one, uh, our 50 ohms, which will be the output of the bandpass filter, through to that 750 ohms, in other words, half of that 1500 ohms. Um, exactly the same maths as we saw before to, for determining N, uh, and in this particular case, uh, because the, the binocular holes are quite small, I elected just to use uh, uh, two turns to seven turns here. Uh, so I acknowledge that uh, it's not exactly 3.87. Um, it's not as good a match as, say, this one up here, but it's pretty close. Uh, when I uh, use the SNA or the, v the Nano VNA down here to run through exactly the same uh, process as I did before, I had a... Uh, a uh, resistance variation of 54.7 through to 66 as opposed to what I had before which was at 48, 49 through to 66 and a, an SWR of 1.41 to 1.36 so 1.31 to 1.54 so very very similar um, across that frequency range now um, what I may have to do and, and, and I'm just looking at in fact before I talk about that, uh, on the original design here um, has this capacitor that runs from this, the centre portion here to ground. Uh, that's quite interesting. Uh, 
when I was initially playing around with the circuit down here, um, I had, you know, the windings were a little bit sort of, it was a bit sort of janky and a little bit sort of uh, messy, so to speak. And I found that I did actually have to have a small amount of capacitance from that centre tap there to earth. Uh, it was only around sort of 10 picofarads or so, just to really tighten up on the Smith chart um, the impedance. Uh, when I tidied things back up again, I found that I didn't have to use that at all, which was of interest. Now the second thing I want to talk about, uh, in his particular design here, uh, and I've also seen it up here, is having, uh, sitting across the outputs, um, double your your desired load here. So in this particular case, the desired load is uh, 50 ohms, therefore to sort of guarantee that um, that in, uh, in load, I guess, on the, uh, the secondary here, you can have that 100 ohms, or twice that. Um, so I, I played around with having 3 kilo ohms across here, um, and saw no difference, because I guess I was using um, 1500 ohm resistors, which were quite constant, uh, and I found that I didn't actually have to have uh, that th um, 3k across here to provide that, that good constant load. Um, the same logic applies up here, so I may look to, once I've actually built this and I've connected it to the uh, the NE612s, I may have to uh, put a, a 3 kilo ohm resistor uh, across the outputs here. We'll see. Um, at the moment I don't intend to do that, um, and we'll go from there. So that's pretty well all I wanted to cover off today. Um, uh, once again, you know, I found this this little nano VNA to be really quite good actually. Um, while it's not a piece of um, uh, lab equipment, I think for the price and for what I do here, which is sort of hobby electronics and, and a bit of homebrew, um, really quite good actually, um, and, and I certainly enjoyed using it. So, process now is to um, solder that on, and uh, what I'll have to do there, because of the transmit and receive side of the house, I'll, I'll have to put a double pole, double throw relay here, which will share those two outputs between um, the receive side and the uh, the transmit side. Um, which is easy enough, I've got a few of those floating around, and they'll just pick off the uh, the 12 volt transmit line up here. Okay, I think I have gone on long enough. I think I've covered off all that I wanted to cover off on. And I will say 73, and I will continue playing with this. Cheers all.